as is our custom on our monthly singing uh, afternoon or singing night on the final Sunday night of the month. We take this opportunity to sing hymns to God and uh, as we have been doing of late, take a look at a hymn in our songbook to consider the words, to think more and dwell more on things that we say to each other and to God as we sing these praises to Him. When we pray to God and we thank Him for the things that we have in this life and the things that He's given us for the life to come, what do we often pray for? Well, we often pray and Thank God, we praise Him for our material blessings. That certainly is something that we thank Him for. Thank Him for our jobs, for our homes, our cars, our means of of living, our food, our shelter, our clothing. All of those things that sustain us in this life and go far beyond that even for all the luxuries that He gives us day by day. Then, of course, there's the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus, the foremost being that he sent his son to die for us, that he was willing to give his son so that we could have the hope of eternal salvation, which then leads to thanking God and praising him that we have that avenue of forgiveness of sins through the blood of his son, to have that opportunity to have our souls washed clean. We thank God for that. And then we also... Certainly thank God for giving us his will. How we can know how to get to heaven. We can know what he wants from us, right and wrong. We know how to serve him. Our God is a just God and he has shown us what he wants through his word. These are typical types of things that we should and do thank and praise God for. But number 24 in our hymnal, For the Beauty of the Earth, our hymn writer brings out three aspects, maybe, that sometimes we may not really think about too much. To thank God and praise Him. In verse 1 of our hymn, our hymn writer says, For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies. For the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Notice our verse here in verse 1. The focus wouldn't necessarily be always on all the things that we would typically praise and thank God for. Although certainly we often hear our fellows thank God for the changing of the seasons. We thank God for especially this time of year in the spring where flowers are blooming, things are turning green again. But notice he describes the glory of the skies for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. That particular aspect of love that our hymn writer is describing is the love of God expressed in nature that we see all around us all the time, the very things that Paul refers to as being uh, testifying to the glory of God. He mentions in Romans chapter 1 that God did not leave himself without witness, that we can see his invisible attributes in nature. In Psalm, the eighth Psalm, a Psalm of David, David says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, 
How excellent is your name in all the earth. David considers everything that he sees, the creation of God. And he says, when I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? Another Psalm of David in Psalm 19 and in verse 1 David says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor knowledge where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. And rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end. There is nothing hidden from its heat. David says that the heavens declare the glory of God. That the firmament shows his handiwork. And then he speaks regarding nature and creation and how that their speech... In verse 3, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Speaking to the majesty and the power and the glory of God. It is to this that our hymn writer says, For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. The love of God in the, in the very act of creation creating all of these beautiful scenes that we enjoy day by day. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Verse 2 of our hymn. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. In addition to all of the other things that we've already described and talked about in thanking God for and praising him for, now we thank God and praise him for nature, for creation, to see his handiwork, but now also in verse 2, for the relationships that we enjoy one with another. For the love that we gain. Notice the different types. This is for the joy of human love. Brother, sister. There's the, the, the idea of sibling, physical relationship, love. Parent, child. Relationships between a child and its parents. Parents and the child. Friends on earth. And friends above. For all gentle thoughts and mild. This is all about the relationships that are forged on this earth. Thank you, God, our hymn writer says, for the relationships that we have. For the love that we can feel day by day from those who are our family members, from those who are our friends, both friends on earth and friends who've passed on. And then he says, for all gentle thoughts and mild. These are the types of attitudes and mindsets that dictate the behavior we have towards those whom we love and their conduct towards us. Gentle thoughts, mild thoughts, thoughts that seek the well-being of others. That's why he describes this type of interaction and the relationships that God has allowed us to have. And then especially when you consider friends on earth and friends above. Whether we're talking about physical friends of earth and physical friends who have died and gone on. Or perhaps even from the sense of spiritual friends. Brothers and sisters in Christ. People with whom we have a common 
chain, a link together, a tie that binds, to borrow another hymn, the love of Christ that binds us together. This could be included in this thanks and praise of God for the relationships that we enjoy beyond just the physical, there are the spiritual relationships we enjoy as well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 4, in which Paul describes to the Corinthians about agape love. This is a self-sacrificial love. All thoughts, as he describes, our hymn writer describes there in verse 2, for all gentle thoughts and mild. A love that seeks the well-being of another. Paul says in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 13, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. It is not provoked. And it thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Paul, in a context of describing spiritual, miraculous gifts, he makes the statement in verse 12 that one day these things are not going to be here anymore. I'm sorry, verse 8. One day these things aren't going to be here. Whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Tongues, they will cease. Knowledge is going to vanish away. But where there's love, these gifts, spiritual gifts, You don't have to have these in order to still have love for your brethren. This is why he emphasizes faith, hope, and love. In Proverbs 17 and in verse 17, Solomon says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. We have these friendships, we have these relationships, especially those uh, of the household of faith. To help us through what will inevitably come. The hard times of life. And if we think for a moment that we're not going to face those difficult and hard times. Just wait. You will. And every single one of us knows it. This is just the way of life. But it's at those times that we first rely on God and depend on Him. And then rely and depend on those in our lives whom God has given us. Our physical families, and most especially our spiritual families. A friend loves at all times. During the best of times and the worst of times. And a brother's born for adversity. To help us through. In 1 John chapter 1 and in verse 7, John says, if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. John reminds us upon the, uh, what the basis of our fellowship together with fellow Christians, what that basis is. As we walk in the light, as he is in the light. As we walk in truth, as we walk in faith. As we walk together and we stand firm on what God says, we have fellowship with one another. And that relationship builds us up and it provides a stable foundation. In James chapter 3 and in verse 17, we read this this morning, that the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. This is... The love that is from above. The wisdom that is from above. This is the type of attitude that it has. How it sees its friends. How it sees its loved ones. The wisdom from above considers the beauty of friendships. And it praises and thanks God that we have these relationships in this world. Verse 3 of our hymn. For thy church that evermore lifteth holy hands above, offering up on every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. 
First, we thank God and praise Him for nature and the love that is expressed from God to us in creation. Then we thank God for the relationships that we're granted to have in this life. And now we thank God for the church, for the body of Christ. And notice when he says, for thy church that evermore lifteth holy hands above. The church that is constantly praising God, that is constantly seeking to do what God wants it to do. The church that is always seeking to praise Him as He has commanded, offering up on every shore, doesn't matter what nation it's in, Congregations of God's people who are faithfully worshiping and serving Him. It is this to which our hymn writer speaks. Offering up on every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Not a sacrifice that is tainted by doing that which God has not commanded. Pure sacrifice based on what God has commanded. And it is a sacrifice done in love. Because we love God. The church loves God. Christ died for the church. We know in Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 25, Paul says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Paul describes how that Christ was willing to give himself for the church. That means it has incredible value. There's something truly loving in the the, the nature of the relationship that Paul describes between the church and Christ. And that Christ was willing to give himself so that the church could be established. In Romans chapter 12 and in verse 1, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is where we get the sacrifice of love. Not just on an individual basis, but as collectively as the body of Christ. We offer up We present our bodies a living sacrifice. This applies to our individual lives, but it also applies to our worship as a church. In Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 2, Paul says, in verse 1, he says, Be imitators of Christ, or imitators of me as I imitate Christ. Verse 2, walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Notice what his call is, and he gives the motivation why to do it. He says, walk in love. Why? Because Christ loved us. He gave himself for us, and this was an offering and a sacrifice that was well-pleasing to God. So what should we do? We should walk in love because we, therefore, love Christ. And we should be willing to give ourselves to him. And then this final part, the chorus. We've been repeating it over and over again because for each one of these, it's just a full sentence. It's a full thought. For the beauty of the earth, for the joy of human love, for thy church that evermore, all of it leads to Lord of all, to thee we raise. This our hymn of grateful praise. This hymn is completely designed to be praise and thanks to God. But in doing so, it's to remind us of three aspects, three blessings that God has given us that may not always be the first things on our list of things to thank God for. And it is for this reason why our hymn writer says, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. In Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 11, the Hebrew writer says, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. 
saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Notice how the Hebrew writer brings out Christ, he who sanctifies, and those who are being sanctified, that's you and me, they are all one. Christ is not ashamed to be called our brother. Christ says, the Hebrew writer quotes Old Testament, I will, that's Christ, I, I will declare your name to my brethren, his brethren, that's you and me. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. As we offer up praise and thanksgiving to God, we are one with God, we're one with Christ. In Hebrews chapter 13 and in verse 15, the Hebrew writer says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. We could never write down, much less sing, of every single blessing, every single thing God has given us, both in this life and in anticipation of the next in a list. we just run out of room. We'd run out of paper. And that's why different hymns that are designed to be hymns of thanksgiving and hymns of praise bring out different aspects of our lives. These are four excellent and wonderful things for which we should thank God. And I hope every one of us thanks God for the physical blessings, for Christ who died for us, for forgiveness of sins, and for the word that tells us what we should do. Our hymn writer adds three more to this not comprehensive list whatsoever, but three that we just may not always think about for nature, the majesty of the world around us, for the relationships that we have, both from our physical family and our spiritual family, and for the church the means by which we are able to worship God, the means by which we can be one with the Father and one with Christ. This is our hymn, verse 24. And when we sing it, not only are we thanking God for these three things, but we're also reminding each other, hey, there's a whole lot more than maybe what might be on the top of everybody's list to thank God for. Those certainly taking nothing away from those. There are also other things that if we really think, we really sit down and consider things that you might not even think about unless you actually take the time to read, for instance, the words of our hymn number 24. We offer an invitation to those who are not Christians to become a Christian this afternoon. Christ died for you so that you could have forgiveness of sins, so that you could follow his word and understand why God sent his son to die and what he wants you to do in order to inherit eternal life. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. For those of us who are Christians, never stop thinking of additional things for which to thank God. Sometimes we kind of thank God for the same things, and that's fine. We thank God for the same things over and over. That's, that, those things are worthy of being thanked, worthy of God to thank God for. But don't ever stop considering all that God has given us for nature, for the relationships we have, for the church. The invitation is extended. If you're subject, please come forward as we stand inside. Four.